My uh, work is the, was the on uh, enhancing the performance of paper-based microbial filters, and uh, for this purpose, we use a special polymer. As you may know, microbial filters or MFCs are devices that can use uh, bacteria to generate power. And they are usually made of uh, two chambers, anodic and cathodic. And these two chambers are usually separated by a membrane. And we know that uh, uh, bacteria can produce electron as a part of its nat natural metabolism. So if we provide an oxygen-free anode chamber, we can, they will transfer these electrons to the anode instead of oxygen. So in this way, we can harvest energy from bacteria. And uh, you can see in the picture a miniaturized MFC. And uh, recently, there has been much interest in developing micro-scale MFC. Uh, but uh, these devices uh, are usually fabricated by multiple layers of glass, polymers, um, or plastic. So they have a, somehow a complicated uh, uh, fabrication, and they require sev uh, several steps of fabrication. Uh, we were the first group that suggested and fabricated paper-based biobatteries or paper-based MFCs, and we reached to the power of density of 0.14 microwatt per centimeter square. And uh, some advantage of paper-based MFC are clear. We know that paper is uh, cheap, thin, lightweight, flexible. And also, we can easily have uh, fabricate this device by um, commercially available wax printers. We can print uh, our um, channels, microfluid channels, and hydrophobic areas uh, on the paper. And uh, um, above all these advantages, uh, the most important Mm, important one is that um, we have a very short uh, startup time on paper-based uh, MFC because of the capillary wicking properties of the paper and the bacteria absorb to the paper very rapidly. So we can see power in a few minutes. But in non-paper-based MFC, usually it takes several days or weeks to see power. Um, our motivation is that um, Paper-based devices are very attractive for use in resource-limited setting, especially in uh, public health and point-of-care diagnosis. Um, and already there are many uh, colorimetric paper-based devices in use, uh, but uh, they, they do not show us quantified uh, data. So we need to apply other modes of detection on paper um, to improve uh, these devices. And you can see this is um, I, the image of ideal uh, point of care device that first was published by IBM Corporation. And uh, we believe that our paper-based MFC has the potential to, um, to be as an instant power source for this kind of application. But our main challenge currently in paper-based MFC is low power density. We know that the power density of 0.14 is not enough uh, for real application. And uh, for this, in this, pay, uh, in this work, we focus on two challenges. First was uh, oxygen invasion into anode chamber. As I said, uh, when there is oxygen, there will be no electrons. Um, and uh, the second challenge is that uh, for a low-cost, high-performance uh, paper-based MFC, we need a low-cost and high-performance paper-based PEM2, because proton exchange membrane is very important for us, because we should make sure that the protons pass, and at the same time, they do not go to the anode chamber. Here is the base schematic diagram of our paper-based MFC. As you can see, it consists of four layers of paper. The first layer is our A cathode. Uh, we printed A cathode on paper. And the second layer is our uh, membrane. We applied PDA polymer on membrane. And uh, this uh, polymer is uh, gas permeable and has non-porous structure. The third layer is our reservoir. It's just paper. And in all the uh, layers, we have hydrophobic uh, uh, boundaries with wax. 
And the last layer is our anode. But in this layer, we coated the paper with PAA polymer so that at the back side of the anode, we prevent oxygen going. And you can see the bacteria in the third layer will attach to the anode on the uh, fourth layer. Um, and uh, the proton can pass uh, through the membrane on the second layer. And also, um, we have a load. We usually put the resistor in the load uh, so that the electron can pass through it. And, and the cathode, these electrons, protons, and also the oxygen, they will combine together and uh, form water. Uh, we use PAA, PDA polymer for several reasons uh, because uh, they are gas permeable, they have a non porous structure, and also they are cheap. I haven't written that, but they are cheap. And before that, they have been tested in uh, different applications and uh, um, they have been used as membrane. And also, they are easy to prepare. And uh, after we apply it on paper, the paper still keeps its uh, flexible structure. And uh, here I, I have shown the um, uh, fabrication steps of um, applying polymer on paper. It's very easy and uh, both polymers are the same as each other. So first uh, we print wax on paper, then we heat the wax uh, so that the wax goes all through the paper and then we apply our polymer. And in the uh, picture below, there are three columns. The first column is just paper with wax before and after heating. And the second column is our uh, paper with the uh, PA coating. So um, there is a front view and back view. The back view, you can see it has somehow a ceiling structure. So it's at the back side of our anode. And the last layer is our PDA or PPDD so that uh, we make it, uh, we use it mainly as polymer, as a membrane, sorry. In this work, besides using polymers, we also try to make our device as more compact as possible. So we ended up having four different designs. The first design, you can see the schematic, the cross-section view, the schematic diagram, and also the photo image of each layer. Um, and the first uh, design, four-layer design, is the one that I explained before. Uh, the P PDA is used as membrane. Um, PAA is oxygen sealing uh, um, layer. So in the second design, we actually integrate our, uh, our membrane and air cathode together. So we directly apply the air cathode on the, um, our PEM or PDA layer. And uh, again, in the third design, uh, picture C, we combined also our reservoir and our anode together so that we directly put inject bacteria in the anode layer. And the last design is our one layer MFC. I have shown the top view and the bottom view. Uh, for this design, we use PAA as membrane because our PDA was uh, hydrophobic, so we cannot use at the same time as the, um, as the membrane. And also, we couldn't have any oxygen blocking layer for this design. Uh, for this, for testing the device, we culture trinella bacteria for 24 hours, and then uh, we re resuspended bacteria and uh, used a new media, and we measured the potential between two electrodes, and um, we recorded the voltage every one minute and uh, read it. Uh, with our LabVIEW in, uh, interface. And also for measuring the current and power, uh, we connected a different register. Here is the output voltage, um, the graph of output voltage for our four different devices. First, you can see it's just open circuit voltage. It's just the potential between our anode and cathode. After 10 minutes, we connect a 10K resistor. And again, after about seven minutes, we reduce the resistor to one kilo. And you can see in the graph board, uh, different uh, device has a different configuration, had different open circuit voltage. For two layer and three layer, three layer it's almost around half volt. 
And here is the current generation on the two register, it's current density. Um, you can see the highest current generation was uh, for our two layer MFC. Even it reached to the current density of 47 microampere per centimeter square. And uh, after that, the highest current was with, uh, for our one layer MFC. And we also uh, measured the polarization curve and power output. In the first uh, one is four layer MFC, reached to the power of 0.8 microwatt per centimeter square. When, then uh, after we reduced to three layer, uh, it uh, increased to 1.4, and our highest power generation was for our two layer design, which reached to the four microwatt per centimeter square. But when we increased to one layer, we didn't have that power increasement, and that was mainly because we didn't have any oxygen blocking layer in this design. So we can conclude that our non-structure polymer-based MFC generated a high power of, relatively high power of four microwatt per centimeter square, that it was 28 times higher than our previous paper-based MFC. In that paper, uh, we just uh, used a wax as our uh, membrane, and also we didn't have any oxygen blocking layer. And uh, among different configurations, we saw that our two-layer MFC had six times higher power than uh, our four-layer MFC, and mainly it was because uh, the, our device um, was more compact, and also uh, there was um, the bacteria was directly close to the anode. And you can, uh, and we could see that in our one layer device, despite having the most compact design, we didn't have power uh, increase, and that was because of the absence of oxygen blocking layer. And uh, for the future, we plan again to increase power uh, and um, put all the in MFC components in single sheet of paper and at the same time block oxygen. And I want to acknowledge that this work was supported by two NSF funding, and also it was a collaboration work with our uh, chemistry department. Thank you for your attention.